Hi, Verbling. My name is Michaela. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And right now we're talking about gerunds and infinitives. If you guys are interested in private lessons, just send me a message. I have open hours this week and next week and all the foreseeable week to come. Ahmed, welcome to class. Thank you. You're back, even though it's late for you, right? Excuse me? What time is it for you? It's uh, 9 p.m. Oh, so it's pretty late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had a lot of work t today, so I'm yeah. very sleepy. <laughs> All right, but well, I won't make you work too hard. Yeah, but I will try to concentrate. Don't worry. Awesome. Great. That's good to hear. And if you okay. fall asleep, that's okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Tanya, welcome to class. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That's Tanya, right? Hello? Tanya, can you hear me? No? Tanya, if you're having trouble, Hello? message me in the chat box. OK, Ricardo, are you there? Yes. Good to have you with us, Ricardo. How are you doing today? Yeah, fine. And you? Doing pretty well. It's a bright Great. and beautiful day so far. What have you been up to? Oh, Ricardo, too? All these connection problems. Onur, welcome to class. Thank you, Michala. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Been a good day so far. Looking forward to a lot of fun this afternoon, so can't complain. How was your day? Uh, as usual, I went to work, <laughs> uh, daily business. Uh, you know, cows always produce milk. So, uh, yeah, we packaged uh, a lot of UHT milk <laughs> and came <Excellent>. here. <laughs> Awesome. Sounds like an exciting day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you came. Thank you. Okay. Natasha, welcome to class. Are you there, Natasha? I'll come back. Um, Ana Carolina, hello. Hello, Michaela. How are you? Doing really well. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Cool. Happy and to see you again. Yeah, I'm happy to see you too. We've got regulars now. It's cool. <laughs> um, Lady, welcome back. Hello again. Good to have you back. So yeah. you're doing a lot of English today, huh? Yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> Excellent. Good to hear. And let's go back. Oh, Ricardo. Dang. Okay. Well, Ricardo, if you're having trouble and you think it's something you need, you've got a question on, let me know in the chat box. Maybe I'll try and help you through it. If you end up not being able to stay in class, stay connected with the chat box because you guys can always message me from even if you're just watching class from the outside. You guys can send messages in the chat box and I'm happy to include them in class or answer any questions you guys have there. Tanya, are you there? Tanya, you're muted. I'm going to show you actually how to reconfigure your settings really quick. So I'm going to screen share, and Tanya, you might not even be able to hear me. So you might have to go to your settings and choose a different microphone or different speakers. I don't think that's your problem, but just in case. Um, and then here is how you unmute yourself. Red means you're muted. This gray-white means that we can hear you. Uh, otherwise, let me know in the chat box if you've got any troubles. Okay. So, let's get to it then. We're going to talk about gerunds and infinitives. 
which are words we use all the time, right? They're forms of verbs. But it gets a little complicated when we use verbs with other verbs. So, um, onur, can you explain for someone who doesn't know what we're about to do? Most of you probably do, but if you guys don't know, explain what we're going to talk about today, how we use verbs with other verbs and gerunds and infinitives and how it's complicated. Mm. It's always hard to me uh, using gerunds and infinitives. Uh, generally, I get used to uh, use wrong way, uh, but you know, uh, you understand me, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, every time I uh, I am forcing uh, myself to do not um, make mistakes. So uh, when I think, uh, what is that? It's gerund or infinitive? Always, it's very, um, you know, uh, I I want to speak in a haste uh, and fluently, but this issue always uh, forced me to um, do not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's tough. The good thing, like you said, is that if you guys use the wrong one, it usually doesn't cause a big enough problem to cause a misunderstanding. But sometimes it can. So it's something that you want to be as careful of as possible. But on the other hand, if you do make a mistake, it's really no big deal. You can just skip past it or figure it out later. And people will probably still get it. Yes. All right. Philip, welcome to class. Yes, teacher. Thank you. All right. And Natasha, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Hello. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Natasha. Okay. Wonderful to have you back. All right. Okay. So the notes are connected to the... Um, where is it? The notes are connected to the page where you got into class, and I'm also going to screen share my copy. And I'm going to make it large enough for you guys to even see. Wouldn't that be helpful? Okay. So although it's not a big problem if you make mistakes with these, it's also sort of a complex issue, and it's very irregular. There's not a lot of rules to follow. It's mostly just practice. So we're going to talk a little bit about it, just read some quick notes on it, and then we're going to get into the meat of our class, which is using all these different verbs. Okay, that highlighted section, I'm going to ask Philip to read for us. Yes, teacher. Gerunds and infinitives are forms of verbs that act like nouns. They can follow adjectives and other verbs. Gerons can also follow prepositions. A geron, often known as an ing word, is a noun form from a verb by adding ing. Not all words formed with ing are gerons. An infinitive is two plus the verb. When a verb follows a verb, it either takes the gerund or infinitive form. Some verbs can take either the gerund or the infinitive with no loss of meaning. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, um, that's a brief explanation of what we're going to cover. And I want to address this really quick because the other day I had a student who was a little confused about it. Um, a gerund is often referred to as the same thing as a present participle. So if you ever hear someone saying that something is a present participle, just know that it's the same thing as a gerund. And I personally, I only say gerund even when I know it's a present participle. Like the verb, will say for example, the verb running can sometimes act as a present participle and sometimes act as a gerund. But 
I think the terms are sort of unnecessarily complicated, so I always call them a gerund, even though that's not actually true. They're not actually always gerund. But running could be a gerund, could be a present participle. It just depends how it's being used at that particular moment. But they're essentially the same thing. I just wanted to make a note. If you guys know what a present participle is, it's kind of the same thing as a gerund. So any questions on the stuff we went over? This quick brief description of what we're going to talk about. Okay, so for example, the verb start, it started to rain or it started raining. Both sentences have the same meaning. There are a small subset of verbs that it doesn't matter if you use the to infinitive like in this sentence or the gerund like in this sentence, it's the same thing. So sometimes it doesn't matter. But most of the time, it does matter, and it makes a difference. Some, sometimes the use of the gerund or infinitive changes the meaning of a sentence. For example, with the verb remember. I remember to do my homework, or I remembered doing my homework. The sentence changes quite a bit. And this is where people make the most mistakes, and it can actually be confusing about what it is that you need. So let's have, uh, Tanya, are you there? Tanya, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Let me know in the chat box if you are able to hear me. And we have another... Yes, uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Have some problem with connection. Sorry. Oh, got it. Okay. Well, it's good to hear that you're with us. And if you have any problems that you think I might be able to help with, you can let me know in the chat box. Otherwise, we'll just keep going. Okay. Um, and the other new student, whose name I certainly cannot read. Uh, hello, everyone. My hello. Hello. My name is Igor. Uh, I'm a new Say student, that again. so it's it. Igor? Yes, my name is Igor. Igor, okay, awesome. Yes. Well, it's wonderful to have you with us, Igor. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Moscow. Very cool. So, uh, very any... cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. All right. So, no questions on what we're talking about so far, right? Nobody has any questions? Cool. Then, Igor, will you read the highlighted section that tells us about the difference between those two sentences? Uh, in, the in the first sentence, I remember to do my homework. The person speaking remembered that they had some homework first and then carried out the action and did it. In the second sentence, I remember doing my homework. The person speaking carried out the action their homework first and then remember doing it. Thank you very much. Yeah. And Tanya, will you read the next part? This part here. Tanya? Okay, then how about Natasha? Will you read that section? Yes, of course. Other verbs only take one or the other. Unfortunately, there is no rule as to which form the verb takes. The same is true when the verb follows an adjective. The best way to learn their correct use is with practice. Okay, thank you. So, when we're using a gerund or infinitive with another verb, sometimes it makes a difference in meaning and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes only one is possible. And there is absolutely no rule about like what verbs fall into one category and what verbs fall into another. Some people might be able to find some kind of pattern, but in the end, people it's just a made-up kind of thing. It's totally regular. There's really not much of a pattern. So let's look at the examples. We're going to look at a list. I'm going to put this on the next page so we have a little more space. Okay. So we're going to go list by list. I have a list of verbs that are usually followed by the gerund form. For example, I acknowledge committing the crime. 
So acknowledge will usually be followed by an ing verb if you're going to use a verb. I acknowledge committing, I acknowledge doing, I acknowledge making, I acknowledge leaving. It's always going to be an ing. The next list of verbs are verbs that are normally followed by an infinitive. So for example, I can't afford to go on vacation. I can't afford to go on vacation. And I agree to the contract. Or that's not even a verb. I agree to do your laundry. All right. The third list of verbs, <coughs> which is getting smaller. This one's not very big. These are the easy verbs, the verbs where there's no change in meaning, so it doesn't matter. You can say, I began reading, or I began to read, and it's exactly the same. There's no difference in the meaning. And then the very last is the shortest list, but also the most difficult. This list are verbs that do change in meaning, and we're going to talk more about that once we have practiced with the other ones, because it is very complicated, and so I think it's just easier if we leave it towards the end when we're all really comfortable with the rest of it first. So let's read this list of verbs. We're going to do a little practice with verbs that are followed by the gerund. So let's talk about these words and make sure you guys know all these words before we start to make sentences. Um, Lady, will you read the highlighted section of that list? Yes. Acknowledge, admit, adore, anticipate, appreciate, avoid, celebrate, confess, contemplate, delay, deny, describe, detest, discuss, dislike, dread, endure, or enjoy. Thank you very much. And Ana Carolina, will you read the next two lines, the ones that are not highlighted but still part of the list of gerund form? Faith, finish, imagine, involve, keep, justify, mention, mind, miss, omit, postpone, bread, quit, recall, recommend, regret, report, resent, resume, risk, suggest, tolerate, understand. Awesome. Thank you very much. So do you guys have questions about the definitions of those verbs before we start to use them? All right. There are some I know that... Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between uh, admit and confess? Um, I would say or... confess is used in more formal occasions. For instance, you might admit something to a friend or family member, but you probably wouldn't confess something unless you were talking to a police officer or like a religious official. So confess is a little bit more for those formal and standardized occasions where admit is a little more general, a little more casual. So I would admit something to my mom, but I would confess something to the priest. Okay. Thank you. That was a really good question. I've never gotten that question before. All right. Anyone else? I know there are some verbs that students frequently have trouble with, like the verb dread. Let's have someone define that. For anyone who's watching who doesn't know what it means, um, how about Rohan? Any ideas about the word dread? Uh, yes. Um, don't drag me around. I think you're thinking of the word drag, D-R-A-G, right? Drag oh, is in yeah, when you trail yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this. Uh, oh, something is a dread to me. It's very difficult. Ah, you're very close. That's a lot closer. So, dread is kind of something that you negatively anticipate. I dread taking tests. I dread washing the dishes. It's my least favorite chore. Yeah. Something that you're really not excited about or you're nervous about, you're anticipating it in a negative way. All right. So no other questions on those verbs? Because we're going to make some sentences with them. And if you get a verb and you don't know the meaning... Detest. 
to test. How about Onur? Would you like to define that one? Can you define it? You know what it is? To uh, test. Which one? This, this which one here. Okay. Test. The test, huh? The test. Um, I don't know. Um, it means to hate. Yeah, to hate. Yeah, similar to to hate, or it, it's sort of an extreme version, really. The test is like when you feel a lot of hate for something. Yeah, disgust. Like mm -hmm. disgust right? Could be similar to disgust, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then I'm going to give you guys a verb and have you make a sentence in the chat box that uses this verb in combination with another verb. So you're going to use this verb and follow it with a gerund form. So you're going to avoid doing or celebrate walking or I don't know, whatever. You, you guys will be creative. Okay, um, let's start with Igor. Will you do the verb how about uh -huh. adore? Adore. Yeah, so write a sentence in the chat box using the verb adore. Rohan, oh. use avoid. Philip, use confess. Onur, use contemplate. Natasha, use delay. Ana Carolina, use deny. And Ahmed, use detest. You're welcome back. Hello? Hi, Tanya. We're making sentences right now using the verbs in the first list. Will you make a sentence using the verb dread? This verb here, the verb dread. And write it in the chat box when you're ready. We have some sentences already ready. They denied having preferences and being biased. Excellent. Well then, we've got a few more sentences before we move on to the next list. Please avoid all alcohol if you decide to drive. Excellent sentence, Rohan. Thank you. Um, so the only odd thing about that, though, is that you did not follow the word avoid with a verb. You followed it with a noun, which makes it a good sentence, but it's sort of different than the actual exercise that we're doing. So try again and use a verb after avoid. So avoid doing. Avoid taking, something like that. Um, and the criminal confessed breaking into my neighbor's house. Excellent. Confessed breaking. Wonderful. Thanks, Philip. I detest speaking about fiction. 
Great. Thanks, Ahmed. Detest speaking. Perfect. We decided delaying our travel because the weather was very bad. So this one actually is sort no, of I tough. Run. I am sorry. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, it's uh, if you flip it around and use delay as your main verb and a, a gerund after that, I bet you'll have a, a better sentence. John, please avoid talking to the officer about our little crime. Awesome. Perfect sentence, Rohan. Thank you. My host fancies dancing tonight. Excellent. So, um, great sentence, but we've got a matching error here. So my host should be fancies, since that's a verb. Or, my host's fancy. You could make one or the other change. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So if you guys finish early, you're welcome to write one more and keep practicing. I think I'm still waiting on probably a couple other sentences. But if you're just sitting there doing nothing, you're welcome to write another sentence. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to read it for you. Um, Anna, if you want me to give you another verb, I would give you endure. Endure. All right, we've got another good one. They delay traveling because the weather was very bad. Great, excellent. Um, I would actually put the first verb in the past, though, since you're talking about was in the past. Like, the weather was bad, so they delayed traveling. Other than that, it looks great. Okay. So, oh, we've got a couple more in the verb link chat box. I started adoring health food. Okay. Interesting sentence. I like it. I appreciated spending time with you because tomorrow you'll be gone. Oh, kind of a romantic one or, you know, sad. Okay. And to finish up, we've got a couple more in the Google chat. I have to endure listening to the music, to the loud music that my neighbor is always playing. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. I think everyone got at least one sentence in, so we're going to go down to the next list and practice one with verbs that are normally followed by the infinitive form. So we're, again, going to read the verbs first, and then we'll talk a little bit about how they work. Let's have... I haven't read in a while. Um, maybe Ahmed, will you read the first list, the first two lines that are blue? Okay. Uh, afford, agree, appear, arrange, ask, attempt, care, choose, claim, come, uh, consent, dare, decide, demand, deserve, determine, elect, endeavor, expect, fail, get, uh, guarantee. Thank you very much. And I have a couple pronunciation notes here. This one is determine. It's actually pretty irregular because usually when we have that E at the end, you pronounce the I like an I sound like determine. But okay. in this case, that's not how we pronounce it. We pronounce it like a short I, determine. Okay. And this one here is endeavor. Endeavor. Endeavor, okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for reading that for us. What does it mean, endeavor? Endeavor is a synonym to try. It's a little bit more formal than that, and it also implies that there's a struggle. So something that's really difficult, maybe something you're not sure you can accomplish, you'd say, I'm going to endeavor to do such and such thing. But it's something that'll be a big struggle for you. 
Okay. okay. We've got two more lines here. Let's have uh, Natasha read. Okay, hate, help, hesitate, hope, hurry, incline, intend, learn, long, manage, mean, need, offer, plan, prepare, pretend, promise, refuse, resolve, say, seem, tend, threaten, want, wish. Thank you very much. So do you guys have any more questions on the meaning of those verbs? No questions? We can write sentences? Cool. We have one more sentence that I didn't go over the last round that I'll read before we do the next one. So, I dread flying in bad weather. Perfect sentence. Thanks, Philip. Okay. So, let's make some sentences. I am, again, I'm going to give you a verb. And then, this time, we'll do the sentences verbally. So, I give you the word and then you come up with a sentence on the fly, meaning you'll just speak the sentence to me. I'm going to start with Ahmed. Will you make a sentence using the verb appear, followed by an infinitive? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm waiting for the moon to appear. <laughs> okay. To appear to me. Okay. <laughs> That's an excellent sentence, but we need to follow the verb appear with another verb. So, appear to do, appear to make, appear to be. Okay. Any ideas? No. I'll give you one. You appear to be tired today. Excellent so, appear one. to be. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Ana Carolina, will you make a sentence with attempt? I, I had attempt to explain to them awesome. that uh, what I made was unintentional. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Thank you very much. Next is claim. And I'm going to ask Natasha to write that sentence for us. So using the verb claim followed by an infinitive verb. Okay. Uh, I claim to uh, to write a letter for my family and friends at the nearest time. Thank you very much. Perfect use. Philip, will you do a sentence with consent? Yes, I consent to make to make a sentence with uh, with the world uh, resume. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Philip. Great job. Um, how about demand? That should be a fun one. Um, Rohan, will you make that sentence for us? Yeah. I, I demand to get more money from my boss. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Igor, will you make a sentence with elect? <laughs> Igor, are you there? Igor, you're muted. 
Okay. Um, we have a couple sentences in the chat box that I think will be worth reading. The survey appears to contradict motor industry claims. Excellent. And I don't claim to be a feminist, but I'd like to see more women in top jobs. Great sentences from Joelson. I hope that's how you say it. And Igor, I still can't hear you, so we are moving on. If you come back, you can let me know. Okay. So the next list is super easy, super fun. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which ones we use. So unlike the last, yeah, question? Yes. I, I have no idea how to make a, a sentence with a left using another verb. Because it okay. means to vote, right? Yeah, it can. Uh, it can mean to vote. It also can mean to choose. So I elect not to answer your question. So although I put the negative in there, I elect not to answer your question. Meaning, I choose not to. It's a very formal way of saying to choose. So I elect, what else could I say? I elect to participate in as many classes as I want, or it's a very fancy and formal way of saying to choose something. All right. Any other questions before we go on to the next set? Cool. If you guys do think of questions, you can try and pause me, but if it seems like an awkward moment, you can also always put them in the chat box, which is a great way for you to save your questions so you don't forget it um, while we're in the middle of whatever else. So that's another way to do it. And, okay. So let's go on. We've got this short list here of words where it doesn't matter. So for all the words up here, for instance, tear. Um, I, well, let's use a different one, it'll be easier. I asked to have some time off, right? I asked to have time off. If I said I asked having time off, it would be wrong. It would not make sense. It would be a kind of a confusing sentence. So these ones down here are wonderful because it doesn't matter. You can use one or the other without any difference, without any confusion. We're going to try some simple sentences with these, and then we're going to go on to the much more difficult kind, the kind where it does make a difference in meaning, and both are possible. It's going to be a mind exercise. But this one will be kind of a the pause before the more difficult stuff. So let's start with Ahmed. Can you make a sentence with begin? OK. Uh, I love to swim, or I love swimming. Okay, good. Thanks. But, but, but I want to tell you a fun thing. Uh, I, I have watched a video on YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. um, say for love, you can't uh, put to the plus infinitive after it. You what? So I have watched a video on YouTube. Uh -huh. So it's wrong to use uh, to plus inf infinitive. After love. No, it's not. I love to swim, I love to play, I love to teach, I love to learn. Okay. I can't, I can't, I'm trying to think of like, do you remember what it was they said? Because it's not wrong unless they were talking about maybe there's some kind of specific oh, example. Sorry, sorry, they said that germ uh, after love is, is wrong. Oh, a gerund after love? So I love swimming, I love playing, I love yeah. joking? No, that's also, that's fine. I love playing, I love swimming, I love joking. Um, I, if you remember, like, maybe, did they give you any specific examples of what they were talking about? Mm. This example, love swimming, is wrong. You have to say, I love to swim. You know, um, no, it's not, unless, I mean, I, I suppose maybe there's a chance British English is different, but I don't think so. 
I think that's okay in both British and American English. I'm pretty sure. Definitely American English, and I'm pretty sure British English too. Um, so I would either go back and make sure that that is what they were saying, or correct them. Because I can't think of a, an occasion when it's impossible to use both. So I love running. I love to run. They're exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's better for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, much exactly. easier. All right, Anna Carolina, will you make a sentence with neglect? I it's a bit difficult. Um, let me think it just to one second. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Yes, but I, I can. Uh, hold on, I just have to, to think later. Oh my gosh. Uh, can, can you ask someone else and then come back? Of course, yeah, I'll come back to you. Natasha, can you give us a sentence with prefer? Yes, of course. Uh, I prefer reading or I prefer to read. Excellent, thanks. Philip, give us a sentence with try. I try to answer the question. <laughs> awesome. And it would be equal if you said I tried answering the question. Both are totally correct. Thank I you very much. That means I, I try answering the question. Okay. Also totally correct. Here it won't matter. Same thing. Okay, okay. All right. Thanks, Philip. Rohan, will you give us a sentence using continue? Yeah. I continue to watch TV even though I'm very tired. <laughs> awesome. And it would be the same if you said I continue watching TV. Thanks. And back to Anna Catalina. You ready? I'm not sure, but I I will take a shot and try anyway. Uh, he neglected doing his homework. Okay, perfect. What's the difference when you use an infinitive and a gerund? In this case, there is no difference. So. This short list of verbs is the verbs that are flexible, that they can use either. They're pretty much the only verbs where it doesn't matter. So May I? Yeah. Go ahead. May I ask? Uh, once I've learned that she, uh, when you, you say, I start to do, it means that she, uh, how can I say? One uh, came first, you know what I mean? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Did I think you? what what you're thinking of is the next group, and it's the verbs forget, remember, and stop. Oh, I think okay. probably stop Sorry. is what you're thinking of, because that one's really complicated, and it does make a difference between the time of what happened when. Yes, I, I am confused that you are, you are right. All right. Well, thank you for your example sentence with neglect. That's a tough one. Um, Igor, will you give us a sentence using start? Igor? No? Still gone? Okay. Well, then we'll move on to the next set, which is the hardest set for sure. But it's also the shortest set, so... Some good, some bad. This is the one where it does make a difference in meaning. And we looked at an example way earlier in class where we had a sentence, I remember to do my homework, and I remember doing my homework. And it explains below that in the first sentence with the infinitive, I remembered to do my homework, the person speaking remembered they had homework first, then they carried out the action and did it. In the second sentence, 
I remembered doing my homework, the person carried out the action, their homework, first, and then remember doing it. So this is what we started to talk about just a second ago. And we're going to get some more examples and some more practice. And let's look at um, other ones. As we're going to look at other ones. But let's actually let's um, try remember, since we have such a good example of that one right here. I want you guys to write two sentences each using the verb remember, one with an infinitive and the other with a gerund, but the same sentence. So create this kind of situation where you have the same sentence except for one is a gerund and one is an infinitive. And then we'll talk about how they're different. This time I want you guys to write in the chat box. So write your sentence in the chat box and then we'll talk about the differences. Awesome. We've already got one in the chat box. I remembered to call my mom. I remembered calling my mom. So Rohan, would you like to venture the tell it, telling us the difference between those? Hmm. In the first one, I. Uh, I still have to make the, the call? Um, not exactly. No, that's not the specific difference. So I'll walk you through this one, because I think we all need one more example. So in this situation, I remembered to call my mom means that you remembered, and then you called your mom. This happened maybe yesterday. We'll say yesterday, you were going about your business, and then you thought, oh, I need to call my mom, and then you called your mom, right? Mm -hmm. In the second sentence, it means that you called your mom two days ago, and then yesterday, you were remembering the call with her. So the uh -huh. call happened, and then later, you were thinking about that call, about what you were talking about or whatever else. Okay. Awesome. So our next set, I remembered to pay a visit to the dentist, and I remembered paying a visit to the dentist. Philip, would you like to try and explain the difference between those two? Yes, uh, teacher. Oh. Yes, the second one, uh, I've paid the visit, and I forgot that I did. And the first one, uh, I haven't paid a visit yet. I'm, I'm, I have to do it. So, I think you probably already did do it, but the point is that it happened after you remembered. And I, I guess you could say that it's not specific, but, I mean, it could, it could possibly be still in the future, but more likely, I think, you remembered, and then you paid a visit to the dentist. Since you're telling a story in the past, mm. most occasions you would already have gone to the dentist, but it's possible that you didn't. The point is that the remembering happened first, and then in the second one, the visiting happened first, and then the remembering. Mm. Awesome. Um, another one. Is Joyelson the name of someone else in class right now? Mm. Or is that someone? I think that's someone just in the chat box. Okay. So if you, if you have a picture in your mind of the time when you did it, if you remember to do something, you do not forget to do 
what you had intended. Okay, so he's giving us a pretty good example here. If you remember doing something, it means you've got a picture. He's got a good explanation here. You've got a picture in your mind of the thing that you were doing. So if you say, I remember playing, it means that you're thinking about playing. But if you remember to play, it means that you forgot to do it, and then you still need to do it, or if you're talking about in the past, you did it. So you forgot what you had intended. That's a pretty good explanation. I like that. Thanks for giving us that, Jolson. All right, let me see if there's anything in the Google chat box. I remember riding my horse. I remember to ride my horse. Ana Carolina, would you like to try and explain the difference there? Okay, I, I should ha have you written on the verbal, I guess. Oh, that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the first one, I remember when I was riding my horse. It's a memory. And the mm -hmm. second, I remember that I, I can go ride my horse if I want to. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So in the second one, you're remembering, oh, I should do that. In the first one, you're remembering a time when you did that. Okay. Great. Any questions on this? It's kind of a brain game. It takes a while to get used to. Diana, welcome to class. Diana, are you there? All right, Diana, I can't hear you. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the chat box. In the meantime, we're going to try one more set since we've got the time. So back down to this difficult section, we're going to try and use forget. So for example, I forgot to feed the cat. The cat is hungry. He has not been fed. I forgot feeding the cat. The cat is okay. I fed him and then I forgot about it. So this is a really good um, explanation of some sentences. I want you guys to do the same thing. Write two sentences. They can be really simple. It does not matter. Put them in the chat box and then I'm going to ask you guys to try to explain the difference between them. Teacher? Yeah. Uh, the second example uh, is a little bit confusing. It says, I forgot feeding the cat. And then it says, the cat is OK. I fed him. How can you fed him if you say, I forgot feeding the cat? Because what we're talking about, um, if you look at them. So the first one, I forgot to feed the cat. That's the, the one you're thinking of. It's bad, right? The yeah. cat's hungry. Maybe, maybe if you forgot for long enough, the cat's dead. That's a negative situation. In the second sentence, you fed the cat, and then you forgot about the action of feeding the cat. So maybe you accidentally fed the cat two times. Like, you fed him in the morning, and then you thought, huh, I wonder if I fed the cat. I can't remember right now. So you fed the cat again, because you, you couldn't remember that you had already done it. OK, yeah. Yes. Awesome. OK. I forgot turning off the light when I left the room. I forgot to turn off the light when I left the room. Anna, explain for us those sentences. OK. In the first one, I I don't remember whether I turned it off or no. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. second, I'm sure that I didn't. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Thank you. How about Philip? His sentences are, I forgot to read the letter, and I forgot reading the letter. Philip, explain it. Yes, I forgot. Uh, I haven't read the letter at the first the first one. I forgot to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second, I read the letter, but I forgot that I read it. Yes, 
Excellent. Thank you, Philip. And I forgot to take my medicine. I forgot taking my medicine. Rohan, what's the difference? Uh, in the first one, I really forgot to take my uh, medicine, so uh -huh. I... In the second one, I did it, but later I forgot about it. Yes, excellent. Well done. I think you guys get it. There's one more that we haven't tried and we don't really have time for, but if you guys want to try some sentences with stop, you're welcome to message them to me either in the next class or on the um, little email system in my inbox. And we can talk about it if you guys have any other questions, because I know this is sort of a tricky concept. We've got one more set from Anna Catalina. I for oh no, no oh, that's old. Okay, all right. So, any other questions or comments? Anything else I can answer for you guys before we wrap up? I've got another class starting in a couple minutes, and it's about sports. We're going to talk about sports idioms as well as sports vocabulary. We actually use a lot of sports terms in like our everyday conversation because they sort of affect culture. So if you're interested, I would love to see you guys there. If not, I'll see you again another time. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.